Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well. Thank you for watching this clip on Evaluate this messy trig and inverse trig function. At first glance, it looks hopeless, but you got to start somewhere, right? The critical thing you need to recognize is that arctangent gives you back the angle, okay? Which is different from if we just go the forward way, pi over 4 equal to 1. See here, we put an angle in here, and we end up with a number, where versus arctangent, it's just the opposite. We put a number in here, and we get a angle out. Okay, once you have this one, it's a little bit easier, because once you write into this, you can say, well, tangent of theta is equal to minus 7 over 6. Where is this theta? Minus tangent or value is negative, that means it's either in quadrant 2 or quadrant 4. Now here comes the difficult part for a lot of students, myself included when I was learning the first time. Is it really theta is this way or is theta this way? So how on earth can you decide it? Because 7 over 6, it doesn't matter. It's just so long one is negative, you should get the same thing, right? Well, it turned out the tangent curve, you can use that as a guidance. Tangent curve looks like this. Now I'm drawing a tangent in a minute. We will draw arc tangent. But I think if you have a tangent curve in mind, it's a lot easier trying to remember what arc tangent looks like. Nonetheless, so the arc tangent range is basically this curve flipped around. It's actually restricted from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. The reason we do that is because otherwise arc tangent is not a function because this curve keeps on going and repeating itself. Now from this definition you can see if you have a negative value here, the angle is negative, which means it has to be in quadrant 4. Okay. Now if you are interested in just purely drawing an arc tangent curve, then all power to you, the arc tangent curve actually looks something like that. It's just the curve above it and it flipped. Okay. So this is the tangent inverse curve. And here's the number. Okay, so minus something over here gives you a negative angle. All right, so either way, you end up in quadrant four. Once you have this one settled in the quadrant four, the rest of the stuff it's pretty easy. Okay, so let's draw this triangle out. We know it's in quadrant four and minus seven and positive six. Okay, so here's my terminating arm, and here's the angle theta, it goes the other way around. And here's the seven units, and then here's the six units. Minus seven. So from here, call secant of theta, CSC, is one over sine of theta in quadrant four, it's negative. Okay. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we know the hypotenuse is 36 plus 49, or 85. So it's equal to 1 over sine is minus 7 over radical 85. And then one more simplification, C as C, theta, then equal to radical 85 over 7 with a minus sign. Okay, so here's the final answer. So our cosecant theta is equal to minus 85 over 7. All right, now, little math break. You see a cute baby here. A duck. And guess what the parent did? They glued, duct taped the baby on the wall. That parenting or what? All right. Back to our math. Now, the important thing here you need to remember is this arc tangent curve okay, that helps you to guide which angle the angle you're looking at. Is it angle in second quadrant or is it in the fourth quadrant? Also important is this. You got to recognize arc tangent will just give you an angle. That's it. Nothing else. All right. Hope this one helps. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan making learning math fun. At least trying to. If the video has been helpful, I would appreciate a comment or a thumb up. Until next time, have a confident day.